Welcome to Uncaged, a show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we are speaking with Haley Rushing. Hey, Haley, how are you? Fabulous. Glad to be Haley, here. It's great to have you here. Haley is uh, working on, I think, something that's really exciting to talk about. Uh, she is the co-founder and chief purposeologist of the Purpose Institute. And she is a pioneer in the field of purpose. And we'll talk about kind of what that means and how she's giving companies and people more meaning uh, and more purpose in their lives. Before we get to what the Purpose Institute is working on, Haley, tell us a little bit about your background and career. Sure, sure. Well, I have been in this, the purpose arena for about 20 years. I actually started back in the mid 90s in the advertising world. I, I was an account planner and strategist, and I really loved the convergence of strategy and creativity and seeing how ideas could be brought to life. Um, but I would say maybe about 10 years into my career, I started to just get this kind of nagging sense of just not being as fulfilled as I had right. hoped I would be by my work, which I think we see a lot in the great resignation right now that's happening yeah. of people kind of questioning how fulfilling <laughs> their work is. And it, it got to the point where literally one day I was, I was typing up some report and I, I looked up at the ceiling. I thought the ceiling, I thought there was a leak in the ceiling until I realized I was crying. I was just sitting mm -hmm. at my desk <laughs> I cried because something was like profoundly missing, um, right. uh, which is kind of a sad state of affairs to, to really be good at your work. And there's aspects of it you, that you like, but it, when, when the meaning isn't there, you're, usually your, your soul will let you know. So Roy Spence, who was the founder of the agency, GSD&M, and a, a, a great mentor, he was like, well, before you just quit, why don't you try reinventing yourself? Why don't you try, like, let's take a second and really look look at where you find meaning and fulfillment in your work and see if we could we could maybe re-engineer what you do to be more in line with your passions and what you find fulfilling. And so it was actually, we, we started doing a big study. We're looking at all of the uh, different brands that we represented at that agent at the agency. And yeah. very quickly, it became very apparent that it was the brands that had a deeper purpose beyond making money, like Whole Foods and Southwest and Chipotle and just these right. great brands, which I actually really did enjoy working on. Um, oh, absolutely. That, 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 that were doing cool things. They had values-based cultures. They built interesting business models that served a real need in the world. And so that actually led to the um, Roy and I writing a book called It's Not What You Sell, It's What You Stand For. Right. They captured everything that we learned from these extraordinary brands. And it kind of renewed and resuscitated my love for what I was doing because it was very pointed to let's use that strategy and creativity to tell the story of the good guys that are out there. But when the book came out, we had a lot of people that said, you know, I've got a great ad agency. I don't need an ad agency, but I really need help with that purpose and values piece. All and right. so we launched the Purpose Institute about 10 years ago. And I've been I've dedicated my life to helping organizations think about their purpose ever since. That's such a great story. And, and certainly, you know, the GSDNM story is such a spectacular agency and, and helping companies really figure out what their purpose was from a brand point of view was such a challenge. But certainly now, perhaps it's with Gen Z, but man, I tell you that topic of purpose comes up in every meeting. And so I'm excited to hear more about what you guys are working on at the Institute. Well, you're absolutely right. It's funny, when we first started talking about purpose 15 years ago, people thought we were like the hippies from Austin that were just <laughs> kind of like these ideologues. But now, you, to your point, it's everywhere. It's exploded, which is a beautiful thing to see. And I'll say what I'm most excited about is I would say when we first started, a lot of what I spent my time on was purpose discovery work. So right. getting inside an organization and really helping them answer the, we we call that the purpose then. So if you imagine three intersecting triangles, we say, what do you... You're, what are you built to do? What do you love to do? And what does the world need you to do? And usually at the intersection of those three things lies a very authentic and powerful purpose that you can use to drive not only your advertising, it certainly does that, but your whole business, your strategy, right. your employee engagement, your innovation pipeline, everything. And so Early on, I was very passionate about getting on and doing that kind of discovery work. I would say currently the thing that's most exciting is 
the adoption and ascendance of purpose in the marketplace, you, we see about 90% of leaders and businesses who believe in the concept of purpose. They understand that purpose will drive performance, that it will help them win the war for talent, that it will help them grow their business. That what we see now is this gap between belief in purpose and knowing how to activate purpose. So it's right. like, I get it, I'm on board, but I'm not exactly sure how to do it. So we spend a lot of our time now helping companies think about how to activate their purpose in their business. And so what the way that we approach that typically involves like, let's, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have a purpose if you weren't already delivering against it in some kind of meaningful ways. But there right. are invariably gaps. And so we get in there and try to say, where are the gaps between the ambition of the purpose and the reality of your business? And then that gives us an indicator of what we need to work on and where the work is to do. So that's wow. what that's what I like working on uh, now. It's really I, 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 I love that. And and I, you know, I immediately think of a lot of the conversations that uh, I have these days with executives are on topics like uh sustainability initiatives, um, uh, environmental initiatives for companies. And, you know, sometimes you feel that companies are grasping to try to find their purpose in that quest, if that makes any sense. And I can imagine that you, you guys probably come across some of that and just be curious that, you know, how, how those ESG and those kind of conversations and sometimes probably even even uh, probably the diversity and inclusion conversations sometimes probably link in with with that purpose goal. Well, it's super interesting. There, in some ways, there's been a little bit of like a conflation of purpose and ESG and DEI yeah. efforts. Um, I am. I love seeing all of the work that's being done today around ESG and DEI and all of those kinds of things. To me, that's almost like capitalism 2.0. Like, how do we create a better version of capitalism that is mindful of the wake that it leaves in its, <laughs> the wake that it leaves behind it? As that's a really great way to describe it, actually. I really like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, so I'm 100% on, I love to see the evolution and business being accountable and responsible for the impact of how it operates in the world and being much more intentional about that. To me, that's a bit separate from purpose because okay. your purpose is fundamentally, well, why were you even invented in the first place? Um, and then as you go about pursuing that purpose, do you do it in a, in a responsible way? Are you doing it in ways that are uh, in alignment or congruent with good ESG practices of being sustainable, being equitable and inclusive and in who you're bringing up in your ranks? But I do see them as different, although a lot of there's a lot of um, uh, just like I said, kind of conflation of the two concepts. Yeah, no, I actually like the way that you were able to separate those two and then also show how they're, they're linked. In, in reality, I think the clarity that a company would have about their purpose would then allow them to set their diversity and inclusion goals appropriately, as well as uh, how they're approaching sustainability and environmental and government issues. So I like that a lot. So tell me when you look out on the landscape, Haley, who's getting this right? Who are some good examples that we should be thinking about? Well, it's funny. Jim Collins, he's, he has a concept called who luck and who luck is, you know, that's half the half the success of anyone's success is just who were they lucky enough to have in their orbit. And so I was lucky enough to have Herb, Herb Kelleher and Colleen Barrett at Southwest Airlines is my mentor for back in the 90s for over 15 years. And Southwest to me taught me everything I know about purpose. They have a great values-based culture that people actually love working there. And they had a, a very powerful purpose of giving people the freedom to fly and democratizing the skies that really held them steady for about 15, 20 years. They operated with that purpose at the helm. John Mackey and Walter Robb at Whole Foods Market. I mean, Whole Foods was just such yeah. a pioneer in getting us to rethink the industrial food system and what it is we put in our bodies and how you create a model that is creates value for every single stakeholder in the system. I think Chipotle and what they've done with bringing food with integrity to the world and really rethinking what the fast food model can look like, as well as how you treat employees with dignity and respect and opportunity within that space. The, the cool thing is, is I, I was lucky early on to have great kind of pioneers of purpose in my orbit, but 
what's now is you can't, I can't throw a stone out my window in Austin without hitting a more purpose, a purpose driven organization. They're everywhere. Right. It's wonderful to see like a whole new generation of entrepreneurs and startups who are just wired to think about how do I use my business to solve a big problem in the world or serve a real need in the world and do that in a meaningful way. And the brand will follow, you know, the brand preference will follow from having done the work to actually create a business that is, uh, uh, as my friend Raj Sisodia would say, is a healing influence in the world. So I think there's lots of examples out there today. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think Austin is certainly a, a hotbed of companies that really embraced the idea of purpose. I'm one of those horrible people that descends on your fair city for <laughs> South by Southwest every year. Uh, so I apo apologies for that. But it's always during that time that I come across some really, really great companies doing some very, very fun things down there. So oh, always good. But, you know, the last couple of years have been uh, an unusual moment, a uh, peculiar moment, probably the biggest moment that will define our, our lives, our adult lives. One hopes, knock on wood, <laughs> you know, that nothing worse happens. But um I'd be curious to hear more about how purpose has played a role in perhaps some of the, your clients thinking or even your own thinking during this, this challenging time and perhaps opportunities that has sprung up for companies as well. Well, you know, I mean, I think you're seeing this, this, what's being called the great resignation where we have more people who are voluntarily quitting their jobs in a times of uncertainty, which is pretty remarkable in and of itself, because usually if you think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs and safety and security at the bottom, usually when you're in uncertain times, precarious situations like a global pandemic, it would make you double down on security. And instead, we see this wholesale trend where people are just saying, enough, I'm not going to work in an environment where I'm not treated with dignity, perhaps, or I don't find what I do meaningful. And so they're going and uh, reevaluating how they want to invest their time, talent, and energy in the world. And so I think that is the what the last two years has done is kind of put a, I don't know, additional um, pressure. I don't know if I'd call it pressure, but this additional kind of internal reflection on what is really important. How do I want to spend my days? <laughs> um, and so I think even before the pandemic, we were seeing this kind of crisis of meaning in the world. I'm a big, yeah. big uh, Victor Frankl and man's search for meaning and his sense that so much of the anxiety and depression that you see in the world today is a, arises from this almost existential lack of meaning. He said, we have the means, we just don't have the meaning. <laughs> and so you kind of see it as, and part of, part of why business I think has arisen as a source of meaning, that's actually kind of happened as we've seen so many other traditional sources of meaning erode in our lives. Uh, Robert Putnam's written a, lot, written a lot about this in Bowling Alone and his latest right. book, The Upswing, where all of these other institutions where we traditionally turned for meaning, like religious mm. institutions, civic institutions, um, clubs. Bowling alleys. <laughs> bowling alleys. I mean, People don't participate like they used to in all of these other arenas where we used to find meaning. And so it's put an enormous burden on work to be a place where you actually go to find meaning. And that's why it's so important when people say what you do, it's become part of people's identities to say, I'm doing something that matters in the world. So um, I think the pandemic in the last two years has really have really caused an acceleration of that desire for meaningful work in the world. Yeah, and that's a really, really well stated. And, and certainly we see a lot of people uh, shifting. Sometimes I, ref I reframe it kind of less about like the great resignation to kind of almost like uh, to maybe the great rethink, because it is people asking that question of what is meaningful to me? And that meaning, meaning may be their families, right? They may be, why am I commuting two hours every day to get to New York City? And perhaps the good thing about the pandemic is that perhaps it offers alternatives, right, of how you can live your lives. So it's really exciting. But, you know, as you look forward, Haley, into 2022, and I, I really just every time I say that the year 2022, it sounds like we've made it to the future somehow uh, <laughs> that, uh, you know, what uh, does the world hold for what you're working on at the Purpose Institute? Well, I just see the purpose-driven business 
just accelerating even further. I mean, you've got you've got the rise that there's kind of three forces at work in the marketplace. You've got the rise of kind of meaning seeking employees. So in the war for talent today, if you're not able to offer someone not only the standard benefits that a company would offer them, but also meaningful work to do because there's no shortage of problems in the world. And if your company is not part of being the solution to those problems, it's going to be harder and harder to find the talent that you need. So we've got meaning seeking employees. You've got the rise of conscious consumption. So as people become more aware of the impact of what they're buying in the world, they're going to be making more thoughtful choices about who they choose to do business with. So you've got that kind of pressure on the on the horizon and then you've also got the rise of impact investing where you know before when you talked about kind of um ESG investments and things like that it used to be kind of a niche thing but when you've yeah. got Larry Fink from BlackRock coming out saying if you don't have a purpose beyond making money I'm not going to be investing in you and you just have the rise of impact investing so you've got employees you've got conscious consumers you've got an, an impact investors where if you're not thinking about your purpose beyond making money and figuring out how you can create meaningful employment, real uh, products and services that serve real needs um, and being a part of the solution. You're, I don't think you're going to be in business long, but it's exciting. I don't, I don't say those forces as like a negative thing to me there. It's exciting to think about how do you use the influence and the resources that you have to be participating in solving some of the biggest problems that we have on the horizon to solve. Yeah, no, I, I see that. And I think that you've described it perfectly. I would say that, you know, for me, one of the things I'm noticing is people embracing this idea of purpose at scale now, right? So it, perhaps at first it was just to get a mission statement, get getting people to kind of march in the same direction. And now it's really kind of seeing that impact their whole business. And that's just incredible when that, that happens. And certainly Haley, you've been at the center of some of the most successful businesses in doing that. It's been great talking to you today. Haley, if someone wanted to reach you, where, where should they find you? Well, you can check out our work at, at the purpose or you can just reach me directly at Haley at the purpose and just make sure that the is in there. <laughs> Perfect. Excellent. Well, we've been speaking with Haley Rushing. She is the co-founder and chief purposeologist of the Purpose Institute. And clearly, not only someone who works in this space, we're helping enterprises as well as individuals figure out their purpose, but actually probably the founder of the space, really, and really helping companies blossom. Uh, as they find their purpose and, and scale it. And so, Haley, thank you so much for being on Uncage today. And we look forward to talking to you again in the future. That was my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Cheers.